Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, welcome to the... My settings are okay. I can hear me. Uh, welcome to the illustration block. Uh, CG Spectrum's Twitch channel. I'm your host, Eric Wilkerson. I'm one of the mentors here at CG Spectrum. And uh, so, like I have been doing for the past, uh, I guess, month or so now, um, really turning this stream into more of a life drawing portraiture session for anybody that's new to the channel or new to watching this um uh, we we talk about some illustration concepts um in between but i felt like it was more important to really focus on fundamentals and potentially help cgs students that might be struggling with portraiture or um, drawing faces for their characters and stuff so anyway um, so if you are a CGS student then you have access to the folders or to the slack channel where I posted some reference um, that I'm using or going to be using uh, right now and so let me sorry oh screen reference and um so i posted a bunch of different stuff eyes noses uh mouths so you can grab that reference from the slack channel uh, bring it into your own Photoshop file, create your own Photoshop file, and have that reference on hand to draw from. So I'm going to do a couple of these. I'm not going to spend two hours drawing and rendering a face or rendering a nose and mouth. Uh, I'll do a couple of these. or least attempt to uh, in the time that I have um, but the focus for me is on quality over speed so if you're watching this and wondering like, why is he still rendering a nose an hour in it's because I want to get every single nostril right there's only two but I'm gonna get them all right <laughs> um, so anyway that's that's what's gonna happen. That's what's gonna happen right as soon as I get my brushes right. Settings. What brushes do you use? I don't use practically any of these. Probably got like brushes, none of them. Maybe. This one. Has a nice stroke to it nice little pencil feel to it so all right down to it anybody nobody out there I am talking to myself right now. That's cool. That's that's our, our stream is a little a little later than usual, so I guess all of the usual uh viewers are all asleep right now. That's okay. Just means that I can just sit here and just draw and paint. Without anybody asking me what my favorite chipmunk is or something. It's, it's fine. Alright. <clears throat> so 
So if there is anybody watching this, if you have any questions, art-related questions, um, feel free to drop a message in the chat. Otherwise, I am just sit here and paint for the next two hours. Drawn. Once I can feel my fingertips, mad cold. So this particular episode or this stream is referred to as pieces of the whole. So the idea is to kind of demystify the process of drawing um, parts of the human face by just studying uh, and doing little details, detail studies of the face instead of trying to draw the entire thing and then hit all the alignments and measuring everything just start off with the nostril okay this is what it is um i don't know if i'm gonna spend a lot of time uh measuring probably won't but like if we look at this like the nose is basically kind of like a pyramid structure. And uh, everybody's nose is different. Some people out there with just weird looking beaks. They're all beautiful in their own way. Just don't want them to headbutt you. Get you right in the eye. You know what? I will just sit here and measure. I don't have anything else to do. So when we're drawing and drawing details like this, we want to be thinking about planes of this form. Like if this were, think of it like if like this, if it were a box okay, in 3D space, you'd have a top plane, you'd have a bottom plane, and you'd have side planes. So we want to think of, we don't want to over complicate this we just want to say okay well if this is the nose then this is where the form turns and this is where the shadows would be and all that stuff so start off by let me turn down my sick beats So we'll start off by just drawing in the, the overall shape of the nose. And the shape of both nostrils. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the lips as well. The 
stuff is so much fun and it's really great practice for when you decide to draw the entire face paint the entire face because there's a level of confidence that you can achieve when it comes to painting a face if you just do little studies like this And I try to push my students to do more of this kind of thing. And surprisingly, they see results um, in their own in their concept work or their illustration projects because there's a, there's a, a little confidence boost that happens. I can paint this. I've, I've done it before. And that's what you want. You want you want to have speed and confidence. So I'm not gonna render render this line or start cross hatching and stuff like that like I did with this, the video before this. It's just all me drawing drawing the face instead of painting the face. This is just my roadmap here. So I want to uh, I want to establish where the shadows are, where the form turns into the light or away from the light. And Get all that out of the way before I start painting. So if we do have somebody watching this, um, stalking me from a distance uh say hi let me know who you are where you're from um what you had for dinner burritos pork chops tofu i don't know get rid of all of these structural lines That is the place I will start off, I will start next with the mouth. Get the lips right. Now, when you're drawing um, the nose, when you're drawing the lips, when you're drawing any part of the face, always comes back down to top plane bottom sides right so the mouth is no different we were looking at the lips in profile you'd have one lip top lip that is starting up here like this curving down and then it's curving in right and then you're gonna have another bottom lip which is facing out this is turning in this is turning out and then turns back in and then you're gonna have another part of it is away from the light turning away from the light part is turning. so there's a there's this whole thing and it there are people out there that have no real upper lip. It's the weirdest thing. They have like this much upper lip. They've just got this weird thing going on with their face. You don't really notice it 
when you're just talking to somebody just in general conversation but if you're an artist and you're used to drawing people and you're used to staring at the human form a lot you start to notice these little imperfections in people's faces and you go my god this person has no upper lip how do they chew <laughs> i don't know maybe that's just me probably See, there you go. I knew there was somebody stalking me. Stalking me from Australia. <laughs> Eggs and bacon for lunch. Ah, oh, well, good morning. Yep. I knew it. it wasn't it wasn't Australia, it'd be like Estonia or something. Somewhere. Anyway. Well, morning to you. You know what? I'll do the get the line work completely out of the way. Then do my color. Hey, yeah, see, there's my all, all my Aussie stalkers. There you go. Sam, how you doing? All right. Yeah, I was I was thinking like maybe I should rotate stream or change the time or something so that different people can be live for it because i know when i do it typically when i do this stream it's like six in the morning for you guys that's crazy i wouldn't get up to watch anything at six in the morning He'd have to tell me aliens were landing out of bed. So structurally, I'm looking at the alignments of the mouth and stuff. So if you've watched this stream before, you've seen me use like the, the rulers, the guidelines, Photoshop. So for me, that's letting me know where the nostril ends where tip of the nostril aligns with the middle of the lip middle of the upper lip that should be accurate then this alignment here i mean it's really nitpicky but i've got time to be nitpicky i'm gonna end out sure my right And if you see me doing weird stuff like looking at my pen all hard like and seductive it's me just measuring it'd be the same thing if i were just if a model was sitting in front of me and i was just like measuring the head lengths measuring different pieces of the body in relation to uh the distance my uh drawing is from my face um i wish i had a better way of just explaining that to you to you um, it was taught to me in college, and I get it, but it's hard to really ex um, But, guys, I think like, Sam knows what I'm talking about. Oh man, 
use stalkers in your comedy my landmarks in there for the lip now like all of this stuff is going to change a bit as I as I go um, once I start painting it actually might not might adjust some things but more or less gonna stay true to That's me just making sure my alignments are right. That lip probably comes a little bit more. So in school, in different schools, they might they might teach you different ways to check your alignments when you're drawing stuff and that might include just making an actual grid grid map um you'll see like a whole canvas split into equal squares right and then that drawing or the photo reference or whatever you're doing you're going to you're going to put a grid over your photo reference as well with the same number of squares going up and down and then you're just matching the alignments just like drawing into um, into these squares uh, that matches the squares on your photo reference I mean that's one way they teach you um, alignments in college or in 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 certain schools I don't know how many people have the attention span No. Comparative measurement. Using your pen as a tool to compare. Yeah, the brow to the hairline is just the same length as the brow to the bottom of the nose. Yep, it is hard to explain. How do you access the ruler in Photoshop? So you have to, depending on if you're using a PC or a Mac, it would be either Control R or Command R. So watch my screen. So you see the ruler on the top corners, right? And hit Control R, and that eliminates it. And if I hit Control R again, it brings it back. And then, if I got, if I drag any cursor, if I drag my cursor over the ruler and I press down and drag, it's going to create a guideline. And once I let that go, it snaps into place. Um, and I would use the move tool to move it ever so slightly wherever I want it to go. Right? That is that. If I don't want it anymore, if I don't want that line, I'd have to drag it all the way back over to the ruler and let it go. And that disappears it for me. That was formative.
sometimes when you're doing portraiture when you're drawing a face let's say you're <clears throat> let's say you're a concept artist right and you've been asked to uh do a marketing piece, uh marketing illustration for a game you're working <clears throat> that game happens to have some fancy actor real like, real life person in it maybe an illustration of that actor's face most of the time they might just collage the actor's head over top of your drawing over top of your your painting of the body but sometimes they will just trust that you could actually paint it and getting those little nuanced details of an actor's face right uh, make the difference between it looking like uh, between it looking good and it looking like some fan art you might see at a comic book convention at your local mall. Not to bash those guys, but you know what's up. Shapes, shadow tones, lay in there, drawn. And how do you access the ruler? Okay, I asked, I answered that. Thanks. More involved than just drawing. It, I mean, it's not really i mean because if i wasn't using the ruler in photoshop it's more it's it's kind of intuitive to me it's like playing the piano at this point um but if i wasn't if i was doing this in front of an actual person like sitting right in front of me i'd still be using my pencil holding my pencil up in front of their face like checking alignments doing all of this and angling it and whatnot and then looking back at my paper I'm just using the tools that I'm being I've been given in Photoshop to kind of make it a little easier for myself so I could turn those guidelines on turn them off make sure that things are working um, These parts, I'll, I might fudge a bit because it's not, not imperative. Shadow part of her exactly right. I mean, it, at a certain point, I can kind of start saying, okay, well, this is good enough to start rendering. This bottom lip popping. My little guidelines in there, marks. You know where the lip is supposed to end. And so, um, so Sam, in the in the uh, general digi paint section of slack i posted uh the reference references for this and um one other face so there's noses and eyes of a man and a woman so if you want to give this a shot go for it okay you don't you don't have to show final work but um it's there if you ever if you it's there if you want to play around quick sketching you don't have to go nuts measuring stuff like i am i'm just killing time and enjoying myself right now.
Cool. I would love to see what you do. Um, I would love to see what you do with it. Hope, hope everything's well and that you're, uh, I think you should be, you should be in your second term right now or almost about to, or if you, I don't know, like where are you in, are you still in the intro program, Sam? That's enough. Looking like Charles Barkley. This is a woman's mouth. Man, Charles Barkley. Now we face. And I'll have some fun with this. And I'll let them. I don't like sampling from the actual photo reference sometimes. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I don't want to sample from the photo reference. So what I am going to do is um, check the values for the face. Now this might all be a little too anal for some people, but I enjoy this stage.
Okay, so... Closing the chat. So Sam, you're saying I'm halfway through the second term, although I had some personal stuff pop up. Work hours. Which is good, good. Yeah, hang in there. Um... An intro program, second term concept art. A mentor tells me you are a bit of a whiz with color blends. Um, yeah, so aging punter, uh, whatever questions you have, you know, just hit me up. I'm, 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 I'm just gonna be sitting here painting this, so you can see me do all of that right now. I'm about to dive in. Um, All right, Flamer, uh, find some place else to troll. That's, you know, I don't need that. Um, saying, I think I need that. Aiming to be a professional. I like it, but that doesn't. I Right on. Okay, so yeah, Aging Punter, just let me know. All right, so I'm going to dive into this. Um, so my process for uh, painting stuff uh, involves using a um, a premixed palette. So it's similar to what I used to use or what I use when I'm painting uh, for real. So. Um, I like to, to play around with I like to play around with the values and stuff. So, all right. Want to just come in, lay in that base. This is just going to be about stuff. First wash. So. Controlling the chroma of this. color, this brown, having equivalent gray tone in there. Nice and, nice and fun. Then I can start playing with the opacity. Now, I've seen, uh, I see Instagram videos where people will do studies like this in oils, and I'm always, I always just sit and watch the whole thing because I'm so mesmerized by it. It's fun to, to see how other people, their workflow, so... So even even though this is just a, a study of a nose, 
I'm still coming in here with um, moving from my shadows to my highlight, building this up from dark to light. So, um, Danny Morales, those are the values. Those are my numeric values. Um, so, like, I know that, like, watch, I'll show you, I'll show you exactly what, what this is and what, how I did it. Um, so I have this gray tone bar, right? White is value 10. Black is value zero. Um, and all of these numbers here are values of gray. Now, if I desaturate this woman's face so that we're not seeing any shades of brown or anything like that, we're just seeing values of gray. I want to know what numeric value is the shadow under her nose? What numeric value is her upper lip? What numeric value is the highlight on her nose? Stuff like that. So I can come in here and I can just sample, just eyedropper tool it, sample that color, that value. And I can look in here and see that it's 56% gray. I hit OK. And if I scribble that in there, it's 56% gray. Now, if I sample that value 5 gray from my palette here, that should be 100%. completely wrong because I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's, um, oh, that's why. It was, no, that was 50%. So, yeah, it should be get on hmm my values are off look at that I need to readjust my I need to readjust my thing well that's not embarrassing at all ah uh, well if my values weren't off what I meant to show you was that there should be it shouldn't be that big of a jump Six. We have value six. Six. Ah, okay. So there's subtleties. So this entire highlight on her nose is not just a value six or a value five. It's variations of it depending on which pixel I hit the eyedropper on. So that's that's what it is because we could zoom in to this every pore so if I highlight if I sample this particular pixel or this particular pixel there's gonna be a shift if I hit like the dark pore of her nose versus this pure light right there so that's a 6.5 65% gray so if I can hit OK on that then I can hit value 6 gray sample that and color it so you have variations slight variations in value but it gives me a ballpark to know where the values are on her face and then from there I just choose the equivalent um, shade of brown, shade of red, and shade of blue, or green, or whatever color I want to cool down that flesh tone. Um, and I just sit here and just play with it and paint. Um, I mean, it's, it's a lot, I don't want to say it's a lot more complex than that, 
but it's a lot of practice to get it to a point where you're comfortable. Um, because, and I had talked about this a lot more with my, my intro to concept students and my advanced uh, illustration students. Uh, so you use your color picker on the photo so you have the underlying values before you paint. Yes, that's exactly right. Works with less than full saturation and in real life nothing is full saturation. Yes. Uh, How do you split your screen like that so you can have your reference right on hand? How do I split the screen so I have my reference? Um, oh, well this, 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 uh, this is not split screen. It's like I just dragged the photo I just had this photo of this woman's face and I just cropped it and I just dragged it into this um, this file that I'm working with right now so um, so yeah so that's that's basically it um, so we can see that her the, there are temperature fluctuations in her face so the highlights on her on her on her face the the, the cheek the upper lip, the nose, they are not the sh same shade of brown. So we can't just say, oh, well, her upper lip is value four and a half. So just grab this value four and this value five and, and blend them together and get what you need. Um, because it's not, it doesn't work like that. This color, these, these two values of brown are not this upper lip right so her her upper lip is a cooler grayish uh, tone so we would most likely end up sampling this value of gray and that I mean, this value of brown and this value of gray um, and then coming in with a low opacity just hitting it uh, squint start to see it right um, and that's just the build up, how I would build, build this up. And it's fun stuff to enjoy the process of stuff out. Try to get as much of it done. Try to paint as much of this block in on one layer as possible. Um, shadow stuff. Cool thing about doing this, doing it this way, trying to attack it all layer, uh, is that if I start, once I've blocked in enough of it, and I remove line work there, start to start to get good form. Um, starts to generate this form. Uh, yeah. Process.
So if anybody ha wants to know anything more about the palette, um, I would suggest taking some time to look up the work or the instruction of a teacher, Frank Riley, because what I'm what I'm actually teaching my students method of painting, drawing that started out 50s in New York City. A teacher named Frank Rock. Riley met. So are there are instructors all over the world that teach some variation on that method students so right now I'm just kind of eyeballing it a very good idea of where my values are or at this point I should be going. and um, just gonna have some Yeah, that's that's perfectly right, uh, aging uh, hunter. Yeah, um, I try to treat this process as close to um, how I work traditionally as possible, um, mainly because I don't want I don't want clients to look at my work and be concerned about the quality or which version they're going to get or what they're going to get. They should just know that I can mimic my traditional work easily and uh, give them a nice result. So, yeah, I try to blend, try to play with my colors, blend my colors. Uh, I do a lot of what I'm. I paint a lot of stuff at a lower opacity. I build it up in glazes. Um. But like right now, taking into consideration that her her upper lip got these cools. I don't want it to be that blue. Saturate this down. Very thinly. Then probably go back over it again. start to stuff out
Start painting over the lake. I've got a good base in there. Sam Kelly says, saying, I walked away for a moment, for the moment. May I hear about how you set up Photoshop palette for painting? I'm just using the color wheel. Um, yeah, so the, well, I mean, I, I don't use this as much anymore, this palette anymore. Um, I use it for the purposes of showing my students how to blend colors, but uh, yeah, sure. So let's say, let's say we grab, say we just take a color. So, I mean, if you're, if you're watching Sam, I'm just going to do this. Let me know. This makes sense. To you. Um, so let's just take this color green. Okay. Um, oh, let me do this all. Let's just take this color green. Um, we can tap into this box and see the percentage of... Okay, great. So you see it says hue, saturation, and brightness. HSB. The brightness is what we want to focus on because that's our value. Okay? So it's 84% green like the as far as the amount of light 84 percent light okay um that is the equivalent of it being a value eight green um how do i know that because it says it's four percent so it's almost 90 percent and if i were to hit this with the hue and saturation Uh, green was probably not the place. So that's showing me. that the let me make sure I'm getting this right let's try to explain it Okay, so we're not gonna follow that. We're gonna follow this. We're gonna follow the grid. So, all right, rewind. Let's rewind. Value blah 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 blah. All right, you choose a color, right? Before we, we're not gonna, we're not going to sample this and try to find out what the what the value is because it's green and it's gonna throw us off. We need to then turn on a hue and saturation adjustment over it. And then we're going to sample the actual value. And we can see that that is 43%. So it's a value for green. Um, I had to actually turn on my, my green palette to just double check. So I just sampled in here. Turn this on. And we can see that this gray tone bar is the equivalent to this gray tone. This this green bar that I've now 
neutralized is the equivalent of this. So what I can do with any color, and it's a fun thing to do, and it, it takes a little while, but if you've got nothing else to do, um, easy to do, just come in. I can choose any wild color. Max it out and say this purple. Um, I can just scribble that on here. Turn that on. And then just glide this up and down until I find out where this is on the color on, on my value chart. So it's not a value 1, it's not a value 2, it's... We squint, it's like value six, right? So now I've got my swatch for that purple for value six. This va my, that's my value six purple. And if I wanted to make a whole new um, value bar for that purple, now I can duplicate that. Um, drag this down, make the next, the next swatch, I can drop that color, this is super anal, ugh. Have that now. I can come in here and I can say, okay, that's more or less value five. And you, I would do the exact same thing over and over again until I get my entire little color swatch for that value of purple. Um, I did the exact same thing for everything for all of these colors. But what I end up doing is, after I've got one whole row from light to dark, I'll merge them all together, right? And you only have to do this once, because once you've got one color strip and the values are accurate to, you know, more or less correct, then you can merge them. And then um, double click on this. Bring the saturation back up so that you can see it in full color. Flip this hue and saturation adjustment layer to that value, to those values, and then play with the hue. So now I can make it any color in the color wheel. And colors should be exact. The value should still be consistent regardless of what color I make. Um, again, super anal. Not everybody is going to do this, um, but this is what worked for me because then I could just go in to my reference, put a bunch of numbers over my gray tone reference, come into this. Uh, value bar and uh, just look at the the numeric values uh, for the skin tone for reds for blues whatever color in the color wheel I want and if I wanted to paint this woman's face green like she's an alien I could do that because I've written down the value structure for her face so I could technically come in here and say okay her cheek is a value five blue her, her other cheek is a value two and a half blue, 4.5, 3, 1, 2, shadow side. I mean, I could paint her entire face with just this one strip of blue based off of these values. Um, so that's, that's basically it. And then you just have to know how to paint. Because like this whole value chart means nothing if... You don't have control of Photoshop. Um, I know that was kind of a rocky explanation. Started off rocky, but I 
think I brought it home. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, just let me know if you, uh, oh my god, was I, I wasn't even showing you my palette while I was talking. Oh man. So stupid. Sorry about that. I thought I had the... I thought I had this toggled. I thought I had this on, but I didn't. So man, I was just talking for nothing. Nobody even bothered to say anything. Or did you? And I just didn't have the chat window up. Oh man. Alright, so Sam, I will send you... I'll send you this palette. I'll just, I'll, 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 uh, I'll send it to you. So that way, that way you can watch, <laughs> that's embarrassing. I'm still learning how to use this, um, uh, use this, um, OBS. I thought I had it on the right screen, but I didn't. Um, oh, well. All right. So I'll, I'll send this, I'll send you this. Uh, Photoshop file, this little palette, and uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. But I mean, if you just watch through this video again later on, and pretend or like with that with this palette in front of you on your Photoshop on your on your screen, and just follow along. It kind it'll kind of make sense. I hope. If you have any questions about it, just just message me through through Slack. I'll uh Oh perfect. Alright. Man oh man. I feel like people were What? Talking about So let me get back into this thing. I was some direct painting. Turn off back shape here. So I've got a couple of different skin tones palettes on here for I've actually sampled Orientalist paintings and used that paint from. too much. Thank you. 
So, Sam, if you're still there, the, um... Remember the ball exercise that I had you guys doing? I don't know if you if you remember that or not, or if it was even class. Um, that... Those exercises have actually been included in the... Um... Those exercises have actually been included in the new curriculum for school, so everybody's going to have the opportunity to do those same value exercises that I was teaching you. Yeah, so that, that stuff's going to be a part of the permanent curriculum now. Like, so the stuff that I, I tested out with you, I tested out with a bunch of my other intro to concept students, and there was like a huge jump in their artistic growth from like week one to, you know, week 12. And then they were able to apply that understanding of how to turn a form um, by the time they got to the second term. And I was very happy about that, that they that they decided to uh, to apply it, to, to add that into the curriculum because it felt like there was like a, that little gap um, in in just digital painting knowledge that we kind of, we had to fill, we filled that. And it's been, it's been a delight to actually see students play with that. Bro. Um. Haha, <laughs> you can't type the word anal on Twitch. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> uh, do I have all my... Okay. Oh man, I'm sorry, uh, aging punter. It deleted your comment. I I I allowed it, but it looks like it removed it. Um, can you type it again? Could you type your question again without saying typing the word anal? <laughs> and uh, see if it doesn't see if it allows you to uh, post it again. Oh, sorry about that, man. I know my 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 explanation probably wasn't as clear as it could have been because I wasn't actually showing my my full screen when I was giving the explanation. So there was a lot that was probably lost due to that fact. So and for that, I apologize. It's been going for two hours now, and I thought I was going to be much farther along, but it has been uh, it's turned into an actual class. Try to use larger brushes at this point up together
that red. Realize it a lot. So the ball exercise that I uh, gave my students, gave you Sam, uh, applies to this. This is all just turning a form from highlight to the shadow. So like that understanding, it, it kind of demystifies it for students, uh, especially when they're trying to paint a face for the first time. Um, like we start off with the ball and then I tell them, well, if you can paint a ball, paint a face. Uh, you can see that aha moment in their work where like, they were nervous about it and then they realize, oh, well, I'm just laying in values. And then I'm going to blend them together to get this finished piece. Highlight. tone any okay so you're saying any tips on how to find a painterly brush all of mine feel like an airbrush I hate it um oh dude make your own brush make your own brush try so it's 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 not the brush it's your settings so if you're getting an airbrushy feel start like go into your i have the right i have my entire photoshop screen showing try it all right good so sam follow me follow along with me so go into your brush settings um you can play with pen tilt you can play with angle jitter uh, pressure sensitivity like you can play with watch what happens to them to my brush as I um, I love this brush that I'm using right now for just like really painterly work but if I angle if I play with the angle jitter this brush it becomes a completely different thing I start getting this I don't want that I want my brush to feel like I am dragging a flat or a filbert across the form. Two completely different brushes there, just by playing with the angle jitter. So, like all of those guys that sell you those custom brushes, and they're like, these are sergeant's brushes for Photoshop. Eh, no, they're not. There's just some dude that just sat there long enough, studied you know, Anders Zorn and... and uh, sergeant's brushwork and either custom made a brush or took a, a, a generic brush from uh, Photoshop's engine and tweaked the settings until he was able to get or she was able to get a stroke that you know simulates what a sergeant might get from dragging a, a flat bristol across the canvas so um also check your opacity like i very rarely if ever paint anything at full opacity um you at a certain point you want it to feel like you're just glazing color um over the surface of your that makes sense i feel like it does to you um there's that uh aging you're saying why would you merge the colors of your palette 
I thought the idea of a swatch was to be able to drag down the value you want. It's a, it's a, it is technical, as you say. Would you lay down the grayscale? Indicate you first indicated, then overlay colors of the same value. Watch out. Capacity. Okay, good. Damn. All right, so well, aging hunter, I gotta break down your question. Why would you merge the colors? I because why would you merge the colors of your palette? I thought the idea of a swatch was dragged down. Want? I mean, this is it's it's. It's honestly just, it's just the way that I, I work. I, right now, usually I'll, I can play with this to get what I want. I play with the values in this little color picker. But when I first started out trying to learn how to digitally paint, I wasn't savvy with the color picker or all of these different, um, swatch wheels and things like that that you could apply to photoshop or to make it look like painter like like it does in coral painter so i i made my own palette chart that um made it make more sense to me like i was used to what i was used to in, in oil paint um but what I, okay, so I understand what you're you're asking me is why I would merge my colors, um, but it's it was hard for me to. I realized after I was I went through that entire explanation of how I use my palette, I realized that I didn't have the actual palette showing on my screen because I'm a noob when it comes to uh, OBS, but. Here, I'll walk back through it so that you can see this when you see this video again, you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so, all right, so let's say if you can, so aging punter, so let's say I have this purple here or this magenta color, right? Um. I have this, I have this, this color. Now, I can turn on the, um, can create a uh, hue and saturation adjustment, drop it down to gray, and I can check my values to see that that magenta is more or less like a value six um, gray. So if I want to make an entire value bar, an entire value strip based on that magenta color, I would then duplicate that color and uh, play with the value. So I'll, I'll do that for you because it was, I know it didn't show when I, I'll do it again. Um, so I've sampled that color. Now I'm just going to drop the value. And okay. I'm back in here. Color. Now I want to know what value that is. So I'm going to turn that back on and I can see that it's a little darker than a value five. So tap that up. Okay. That's more or less right. So for these two colors, this is basically answers your question, like why would you merge your swatches? So these are my two 
swatches of color. These are my two colors, <clears throat> a value six and a value five magenta. Um, I can basically make an entire value bar basically by doing this, tapping the color, coming in here, dropping the value, and then painting it in here to see which value it aligns with, which numeric value it aligns with. That makes sense. Once all of that is done, I can merge those down and then put a huge saturation adjustment layer over it. Flip that to this and then push the saturation back up and then use the hue to change the va change the color to whatever color I want um, in the color wheel. But I would always note that the values are accurate. So I've already done that work. That makes sense. Um, but this is kind of complex and, as I was saying, anal, but it guarantees um, guarantees results if you know what you're doing in Photoshop. If you don't know what you're doing in Photoshop, it doesn't mean anything. It's kind of like somebody kind of like being handed the instruction manual to a super suit, but the directions are in Alien. That was the entire plot line of the greatest American hero. That makes some kind of sense. Oh. Right. I'm going to just finish paint this up. Whatever I can get. It's always fun to just sit here and stuff out. Subtle variations of gray and brownish tones, cool colors, regardless of what what race you're doing, or the person might um, light on their face, the color of their face completely depends on the temperature of the light hitting their face. So if you get a warm light, cool light. stuff. Yeah, I know it's it is kind of it's kind of it is super technical. Um, I actually 
that's why it's I I kind of keep that kind of stuff. Um, I keep it. I, I try not to explain it to people outside of my advanced class, because there are like whole videos, uh, a, a bunch of different videos that go along with it to explain the process of the technical process of digital painting and, and and color mixing and blending and things like that but um it's uh like what i just told you is a fraction of what i actually give my my advanced students um i i try not to nerd out while explaining this stuff but i get really giddy talking about it because it's just so much fun to talk about um but
You're saying you have a great blender. What do you use? What are you using to blend? How are you doing? And everybody has a little different method process. Um, my my blend my blending happens with smudge tool. Which I treat like a dry brush. Um. If I, were, if I were painting traditional media, I would be approaching this with clean dry brush, fan brush, that soften and blend. Um, but again, it's one of those things that doesn't mean anything if you don't know how to use properly right like i've i've i can walk you through step by step how to use the tool the way i'm using it um but like it's one of those things where individual results may vary um and it, and it what's what's interesting is that the more traditional you get with this process the more of your natural tendencies are going to come through. So you'll find after you learn the tools and stuff that your stuff, your paintings might naturally start to look like something you would have done in oils or something. Um, that'll just come through because your hand, you know the tools. And just goes and just does what you normally do. Brian's presets. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, man. I mean, play with that stuff and. Um, use what use what works what works for them that's great I kind of I'm kind of in the mode of well it doesn't matter what brushes you use whether they come who they come from it's all what about what you do with it like I could give you all of my brushes it won't mean anything I I just stumbled across this brush recently. Never used it. I've probably had it for years. Never used. It. So I started doing this Twitch stream. Love it. Absolutely. Just got this. Such a buttery. Painterly feel to it. Almost effortless. And. Just coming in. Doing what I. Very simple. I think at some point I'm gonna try to just make try to prove a point with uh, with this digital with digital painting. At some point I'm going to just make a custom brush out of my name, either my first name or my entire name, or just maybe my last name. Just make a custom brush out of that and just do a whole portrait, in a whole portrait just with my name, and and just show you like. Doesn't matter what brush you choose, but how you use it. You don't have to go spending crazy amounts of money on brush packs. 
um, some YouTube celebrity or something. About what you. Same, same as like you could go out and buy the exact same brushes that uh, some traditional oil painter uses. Basically, just flats, rounds, filberts, brights, and brushes, rounds, synthetics, bristle. You're gonna get the same results? Maybe not. Nostrils all up in your screen. Nostrils. Nostrils. And I didn't even get to the lips. Uh, that's going to be it for our stream tonight. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to finish this or not. Uh, not today. Well, so, okay. So I'm, I'll probably finish this, but it probably won't be for a little while because the school is going to be on break for two weeks and we come back. So I think my next stream will be january 7th and um so i'll probably be doing more little little demos like this i'll probably i'll finish this one up and i then my next stream and then move on to drawing an eye and another nose playing with different skin tones things like that but yeah this is basically the workflow um having fun just painting uh Drawing out the structure of the form and laying in color over top of it, putting in that base wash. If I did this right, if I turn off this wash, you can see just how much of that base, that under under coat, is showing through. If I turn out the turn off the lines, you can see that the painting actually holds up without the line work. That's what you want want a solid structure um, the line work is just the roadmap once you've got that roadmap in place you know what your value structure is you can paint it whatever color you want so um, yeah aging punter thanks thanks for the questions thanks for joining me um, and uh, Usually my stream is at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 to 5. I don't know if that works for your schedule, but that's usually the time that I will be on. Um, I wasn't able to do it at my regular time. Family commitments, but um, I was happy to do it. Happy to sit here and paint and explain the process and talk, talk shop for two hours. Um, anyway. That's what I got for you guys, and uh, Alex is saying, looking real good. I'd love to see you do a portrait of the likes of MF, MF Doom and see you your rendering techniques for metal and his... I don't know who that is. Who's MF Doom? Mask Good Vibes. I don't know who that is. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've done a couple of full portraits in this stream uh, so far, either uh, full paintings or just drawing them. Uh, you'll just have to go back in. If you go, go to YouTube, go back into the illustration tab of all of the Twitch videos, um, and you can see some of the, the previous things. I kind of repeat myself a lot talking about value, structure, drawing. All that stuff but it's worth repeating because sometimes you can't get all that in one one shot one statement so I mean I could go in 
to a crazy amount of detail rendering this nose even more than I already have, but it's not really necessary. So that's going to be it for me tonight. Um, I've got a date with my hot, hot PlayStation. Oh, yes. All right.